York City, home to Serpico and Spider-Man, where Rosemary's Baby was born and King Kong died. The greatest city in the world. Or at least that's what a lifetime of movies and songs and Broadway musicals has taught me. There's no other city that's been so defined by the movies about it. The musicals of the 1930s, the gritty crime dramas of the 70s, romantic comedies of the 90s, and the indie movies of the 2000s, which are technically comedies, but are also pretty depressing. But to me, the great New York movies of the past decade are the John Wick movies, which reimagine the city as a neon noir home to a vast underworld of assassins, where death awaits around every corner. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go around the city visiting every location from these movies. Let's go. We begin just off of Wall Street at the iconic Continental Hotel, which it turns out is really a sushi restaurant. This here is the Red Circle Club, where one of the most famous action scenes in the movie takes place. But in reality, it is New York's surrogate's court. This is the base of the Manhattan Bridge, where John meets with Marcus. This is Bethesda Terrace, and right over there is where Perkins is assassinated. This is the Lincoln Center Fountain, where John has a shootout with Cassian. And this is the Oculus, where John continues his shootout with Cassian. This building right here is 135 Plymouth Street in Dumbo, the headquarters of the Bowery King. This is Bethesda Fountain, where John meets Winston at the end of the movie. This right here is the mall, where John flees as hordes of assassins everywhere watch him suspiciously. This is Cortland Alley, which you have seen in dozens of New York set movies and TV shows, but most importantly, this is where John meets the TikTok man. This is the New York Public Library, where John stops by to pick up some important stuff and kills a man with a book. This is Doyer Street in Chinatown, and through one of these doors here is where John goes to find the doctor to get stitched up. This is the United Palace in Washington Heights, which in the movies is home to the Belarusian crime family, where John grew up. This is Grand Central Station, where John returns to the city after his trip to Morocco, and he stabs a guy right around here. This is the Manhattan Bridge, where John fights a bunch of ninjas on motorcycles with swords. Although technically, most of the scene was actually shot on the Verrazano Bridge. So when I say the John Wick movies are great New York movies, what does that mean? What is a great New York movie? A great New York movie is one that uses New York for a reason, to say something. It captures some sort of essential truth or feeling about the city. It means it would fundamentally change the movie if you said it somewhere else. Like, can you imagine John Wick in Los Angeles? No! You can't get anywhere in that city by walking, so he'd have to escape assassins by driving, and then just get stuck in traffic for three hours? That would be stupid. Anyway, in the past hundred years of cinema, New York has been many things. It's been romantic, a place where people go to follow their dreams, a cesspool of greed and corruption. It is whatever filmmakers need it to be. One of the things that separates the John Wick movies from their peers is how cinema literate they are. Chapter 3 alone references everything from Bruce Lee's Game of Death, to Tarkovsky, to Unshian Andalou, to The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. And they understand that they're a part of the long tradition of New York movies. Visually, John Wick is an update of 40s and 50s noir. Films like The Naked City and The Sweet Smell of Success showcased New York mainly at night, shooting on location, emphasizing the scale of it, the imposing darkness on all sides. But John Wick injects that with hypersaturated neon lights, creating a sort of pop noir that's perfect for the heightened comic book sensibility of the world. 
New York is one of the oldest cities in the United States, and it has by far the highest population. Much of that is crammed onto the island of Manhattan. The city is so dense that it's impossible to see it all. John Wick captures this idea that around any corner, through any door, there could be an entire hidden world. We've seen similar ideas before. In Hellboy 2, the entrance to the magical troll market is right under the Brooklyn Bridge. In the comic book Fables, an entire neighborhood of fairy tale characters exists hidden in Manhattan's Upper West Side. And of course, in Men in Black, New York is home to a large community of hidden aliens. In John Wick, an entire underworld of assassins is hiding right in plain sight. They own establishments throughout the city, they operate the taxis, through any random door might be an underworld doctor or the headquarters of a network of homeless hitmen. What these movies get is that no matter how well you know the city, there's still so much you don't see. And in terms of what these movies have to say about New York, they bring together elements of several classic New York films. Like Rear Window, it emphasizes the density of the city, how closely packed together people are, and how murder can occur side by side with people going about their daily lives. Like Rosemary's Baby, it captures the idea of feeling totally isolated, with no one to turn to, in a city of millions. It's similar to Escape from New York in the way it imagines the city as a war zone, although it's closer to the New York of The Warriors, in which the mere act of getting home means battling your way across the city. And John Wick owes a huge debt to the New York set films of Martin Scorsese, particularly After Hours, which exaggerates the worst aspects of the city to capture a very real experience. That sometimes it feels like the entire city is against you. In reality, there's no conspiracy plotting against any of us, there's no horde of assassins trying to murder us, but there are times, usually when trying to get home at the end of a very long day, that it feels like New York itself is a force set on our destruction. And yes, in these movies, occasionally the geography of the city can get a little messy. Like, you can't really enter Manhattan from New Jersey by walking across the Brooklyn Bridge. Lincoln Center and the Oculus are five miles apart. This museum isn't even in New York. It's in Italy. But these movies are portraying a heightened, fantastical New York, and the feeling the images communicate is more important than their geographical accuracy. These are genre movies, and through the way they exaggerate elements and stray from reality, genre movies can sometimes be the ideal vehicle to communicate ideas. And I think the hyper-violent, neon-drenched world of John Wick captures aspects of New York better than any other recent movies. But I don't know why they pretended the PATH train was a C train. It's just a weird choice. So that said, assuming they make John Wick Chapter 4, which I guess they'll call Post Bellum, here are some things about New York I think they need to include. Subways. In Chapter 2, John spent a little bit of time on the subway, but these movies have yet to explore how hellish it can be, how overcrowded they get, how they get stuck underground, and how they always seem to turn against you when you really need them. I'm thinking they could send a squad of assassins after John Wick on a train, and he's trying to fight his way through the mob of people at rush hour, and then the train gets stuck between stations. That would be cool. And of course, since John still needs a new home after his house got blown up in Chapter 2, they need to capture the experience of finding an apartment in the city. That's basically like going to war. So you could do an entire John Wick movie just about that. I scratched the surface of it in this video, but I'm kind of obsessed with cities in movies. Old cities, modern cities, and especially futuristic cities. Honestly, I don't know why I haven't made a video about futuristic cities yet, but anyway, if you're like me and into that sort of stuff, you should go watch the documentary Futuropolis, Mapping the City of Tomorrow. It's all about the evolution of Singapore and its wild futuristic skyline and how it's going to grow in the future. This and more than 2,400 more titles are available on CuriosityStream, the first streaming service dedicated exclusively to documentaries and our sponsor for this episode. A subscription is only $2.99 per month, but you can get your first 31 days totally free by signing up at CuriosityStream.com slash Patrick H. Willems and using the promo code Patrick H. Willems. It's my name. Go do it. Hello everyone, welcome back, thank you so much for watching. I got sunburned making this video, so I want you to know that I suffered for your entertainment. Now, important update, we are getting much closer 
to hitting our next Patreon goal, at which point I will take my parents to see Avengers Endgame and make a video about it. So if you want that to happen while the movie is still in theaters, go to patreon.com slash patrickhwillems, plus then you can join our Discord server, get exclusive updates and announcements on videos, lots of fun stuff. Anyway, beyond that, follow me everywhere at Patrick H. Willems, listen to the Infinity Podcast every Monday, go to r slash thrillums on Reddit for our subreddit, and I'll see you back here in two weeks.